My name is Dave Heller, and uh, I am the county's redistricting uh, consultant. This is my second time doing this. Ten years ago, the county hired me, and I worked with the seven commissioners, and we passed this map. The commissioners did seven to nothing. Pa map was passed unanimously, and the map, I'm proud to say, went through ten years without ever being challenged in court which these days, when redistricting happens, is really quite an achievement in and of itself. Um, the commissioners are seeking to do the same thing again. We would like to pass a map seven to nothing, uh, hopefully unanimous, and a map that will reflect the changing demographics of Clark County and, and specifically Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Henderson, and, and the, its most populated areas. Um, we are here tonight because the Constitution basically tells us we have to. Every 10 years, the Constitution says that we have to redistrict the county, just as the state does congressional districts and state senate districts and state house districts to make them evenly balanced so they all have the same number of people or at least very close to the same number of people. Under uh, federal law, county districts have to have no more than a 10% variance. That is to say, one district cannot vary from another's by population by more than 10%. Um, in Clark County, the commissioners have told me they would like a, a much lower variance. And we are operating, at least now, with the goal of getting every district within 2% rather than 10%, because the commissioners all believe in the concept of one person, one vote. And if the districts are relatively equally populated, then each person's vote will count roughly the same. Redistricting is important because who your elected officials are and how closely tied they are to your community is going to impact the policies that you receive over the next decade. And so, we have tried to draw these districts in a way that preserves communities of interest, that keeps minorities and language minorities together, um, and that allows people to make sure that their voices are properly heard. I, I've laid out here what we're calling the six rules for redistricting in Clark County. These are the principles that have guided the maps that you're seeing here tonight. Number one, as I said, we want to make sure they, the population is equally distributed. We want to make sure the districts are roughly balanced. Number two, they have to be contiguous. That is to say, there can be no break in the districts. They have to touch, every district has to continue on without losing um, contiguity between one end and the other. It all has to touch. Uh, number three, we'd like to see the districts be relatively compact. We don't want uh, districts that are enormous. We'd like to keep them compact to the extent that we can. Um, number four, we want to make sure, as I said before, that there is an opportunity for minorities to elect representatives of their own choosing. We want to keep, uh, and I've endeavored in drawing the maps that you're seeing tonight, to keep the African American community together as much as possible, to keep the Latino community together in districts as much as possible, to keep the Asian community together in a district as much as possible. In, in Clark County, I will tell you, and I'm proud to say this, in Clark County, that is really, really hard. And the reason is because, to me, Clark County is an American success story. There are not 
significant pockets of African Americans in just one part of the county. They are spread out over much of the whole county. The same with Latinos, the same with Asians. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. That's what we all aspire to. So trying to create districts that are majority Asian or majority African American in Clark County is a very, very, very difficult thing. Um, we have endeavored here tonight to take Clark County one step further. In the current map, again, the map that you see here, we have one Latino majority district. That is District D. The commissioners have expressed a strong desire to see a second majority Latino district. And both of the maps that you're looking at tonight, to my left, your right, reflect that. Both District D and District E are majority Latino. Uh, number five, in drawing these maps, I've tried as best I can to have respect for neighborhood boundaries. In some of these neighborhoods and communities, uh, they're simply too large or they are located right in the middle of where a district would break by population to have them be completely contained. And in those cases, we've divided them into two. We've tried not to divide them into three. And finally, as I said, we've tried to keep minority and minority language communities together to the best of our abilities. We've tried to respect communities of interest as much as we can. But most of all, the most important thing I want everyone to know here is that these are not finished maps. Not by any definition. These are simply a reflection of my thinking at this point in time. But the reason we've called this meeting is for me personally and for the commissioners to hear from you and hear your ideas and your thoughts and your suggestions for how Las Vegas and North Las Vegas and Henderson and how our county ought to be redistricted. So what I, I've put out comment sheets, comment cards here. If anyone would like to fill one out and leave it with us, I will read every one of them. I promise you that. Um, but I will be happy to open it up and hear from you because I'm interested in your feedback and your thoughts regarding what I've drawn as well as your thoughts of just what, what Clark County ought to look like when it's redistricted. So this, this whole session tonight is designed really to be a listening session for me and for somebody who's holding a listening session, I've been doing a lot of talking. So I'm gonna stop and, and I'm going to open it up to people in the public and solicit your feedback. Anybody? I think the people who are watching over the internet would prefer you to have okay. a microphone. Anna Binder for the record. Um, I was summoned to show up here today because um, other people in our community are busy with other meetings. The first question um, that a lot of the community has is, one, is this the only meeting? That is a good question. Um, the answer right now is, I, I don't know. I got to report back the results of this meeting to the commissioners and to my bosses on the staff. Uh, of Clark County and we'll decide. Um, it, it's, it's hard to argue for additional meetings, honestly, when there are a number of people that I can count on two hands in the room, right? I mean, ultimately, these meetings are determined by public interest and if there's only 10 or 12 people here, it, it's, it's hard to make a strong case that we need to have another one because 
the public is so interested in this, but I don't know. That's for, that's for commissioners to decide. Because um, I would like everyone to point out that even though our census data was released a little late this year due to COVID, we are still being held to the um, deadlines to turn all of this over for elections next year. So if our elected officials are streamlining any of this and not including the community more as a whole, then we are going to have issues. Uh, tonight we see, you know, yeah, about a handful of people, but they don't represent everyone in our community. We have a lot of transportation issues in our community for people to come to meetings like these. And um, I think the county just tweeted out that we also have a connectivity issue. So citizens, uh, even if they can't come down, they lack access to internet to be able to participate online. So those right there throw some really red flags to me, um, especially when, like I think this is the first time in a year, our, our Clark County School District trustees have already set up about, what, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 meetings for their redistricting a week ago. And I just saw notice of this one over the weekend. And then obviously we all know social media was down today. So that impacted a lot of our community members who do more re outreach back into the community to get interested parties. Um, so that is something we're very interested in. I, I will add, thank you so much for that. Um, I will add that we have a uh, email site set up, redistricting at clarkcountynv.gov where people who have opinions and want to share them with myself, with uh, commissioners can easily do that and conveniently do that. So we want to hear from the public as much as possible. That's for sure. Hi, um, my name is Joanna Jacob and I work for Clark County Administrative Services. So after this meeting, um, we'll have a website set up that we will be publishing for the community so that you can view these maps on your own time. Um, and then, like Dave said, there will be a way to provide this feedback. In addition, um, we'll be introducing these maps at a Clark County Commission meeting. So there will be some time, some additional time. This won't be the only opportunity for you to provide this feedback. I'm not familiar with what the state paid for. I, I, I just, I simply don't know the answer to your question. I'd be happy to research it. I, I'm just not aware. Um, my name's Ed Gonzalez. I'm the secretary of the Clark County Republican Party. Um, do you have a couple things um, on data? So you have the, um, the breakdown by population. Are you going to be able to provide things like the breakdown by um, ethnicity that you were talking about for trying to create D and E as well? Of course. Okay. So, and then a couple of things you talk about compactness. I mean, the one thing that you noticed from not just the previous maps, mm -hmm. so you look at the Clark County School District, you look at the Clark County Commission, same seven districts vastly different maps, vastly different results. You have a Clark County Commission, or you have a school board right now that's pretty diverse, majority minority on the board, um, you know, represents a little bit more of the demographics of the county. At one point, the Clark County Commission was a little better. We had a female majority on the board at one time. Now it's, you know, Mary Kirkpatrick, McCurdy, and, you know, what we don't think of diversity. So I look at that as, as a possible um, examples of making sure that when the maps are being drawn, and I'm sure you've tried that to a certain extent, to make sure it reflects the entire diversity, even the ones on the list, and also making sure that people can elect people in their communities. I look at map two and one, and the concerns I have, you know, obviously District A continues with Spring Valley going all the way down to Laughlin. That doesn't look compact at all. Concerns about maybe the Asian community, but I'm making an assumption because I haven't seen the data. You look at District E, which is a Hispanic one, and I'm a, a Latino as well. So I also make sure that I have representation on there. And I look at some of the maps when it goes all the way down to um, Henderson on the back end with Lake Las Vegas. That looks like something that I don't see where a community of interest with Lake Las Vegas going to areas just south of downtown. And then you start looking at little areas too. And to me, the curiosity is in E, 
that little finger heading into D. You know, I'm assuming that might be a Hispanic community and stuff. So those are concerns that I would have on that is saying, where's the population? How can we make a better map drawing of community of interest as well? So thank you. Sure. Let me, let me try to address a couple of the questions that you asked. Uh, number one, with regard to District A, um, if you look at this map and then you look at the current map, you will see that District A barely changes at all. And one of the things that the commissioners felt relatively strongly about is they want to have a high turnout in Clark County elections. And when you change a significant number of people's district, you're going to reduce turnout. You confuse people and it reduces turnout. And so the mandate that was given to me was not throw away the current map and start fresh with a new sheet of paper and design this how you think it might be done best, but instead work with the existing map, try to minimize the number of people that are dislocated from one district to another, and simply try to accommodate the demands of the Constitution by fixing these districts so that uh, District D is not 11% underpopulated, District E is not almost 10% underpopulated, and District F is not 12% overpopulated. So I can understand why you would say, hey, why does this District A start in Spring Valley and go all the way down to Laughlin? The answer is because that's what it does currently. Um, with regard to uh, this, what you called a finger in here, these are, these census tracts right in here are all exceptionally uh, dense and uh, heavy Latino population. And this was drawn to make sure that we got District E over the 50% threshold. It, it's, it's important to each of the commissioners that we have, as I said before, two majority Latino districts. And the purpose of this finger here, if, to use your phrase, is just that, to help us achieve that goal. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, Gabo Edebike. Um, Chris Gentiliani, for the record. Um, you on television? Oh, I don't need to be on television. The, that's an interesting concept that the commissioners have this time around, is not to have people get disrupted because we've changed how we vote. It's by mail if you want it, and precincts no longer have the boundary lines that they have. So I don't buy that. I think the growth areas are F and A, and that's where things really ha have boomed, and it risks diluting the minority majority potential districts. I, to me, it doesn't matter what we did 10 years ago. This is, this is a new, fresh start to really take a look at where our population is. The sadder part is that with the census turnout, we don't truly, there's probably an undercount, and there's probably an under-identification, both for Hispanic as well as Asian Americans, as far as that's concerned. People assume because you have Chinatown in one area, that's not where folks live, <laughs> you know? And you're right, we have a very diverse area, but it's very spread out, and there's not pockets, so we don't want to amplify that part. Maybe an interesting idea would be to take the other current maps that exist for school districts or those that are more countywide and do an overlay and just see how they were represented and maybe take your map and do an overlay where you can peel it back like an onion so you can start to see where things were moved or not moved. It would be helpful to have the breakout of, of um, uh, Asian American, Hispanic, African American in, by district on a board I hope the district or the commissioners will do at least two more town halls because we did three when I was on the commission. So um, don't underestimate people's enthusiasm. I'm getting texts from people on Channel 4 watching. So there are more folks out there that are actually in this room, but I'm kind of impressed that this many people turned out. So, you know, hey, <laughs> we've, we've been to meetings when it's just been three, right? So, so I, this is preliminary. It's still early. The city I have some real concerns with because I think they're going to try to dilute a majority-minority uh, program. 
I don't see, um, I think there's a seventh component that the feds require, which is your continuity, your compactness, but there's also minority representation that really should be on that board. Um, it just, yeah, but it, it, it there's, it, it makes it look like it's, the, yeah, it's like the rules for Clark County. They're the federal rules to be able to comply with one person, one vote when you would do redistricting. So can you just talk through what your percentages are over on the board with the population so that folks sure. understand what the plus 30, minus 10? Of course. The ideal size under the census, the ideal size of each of the county commission districts is 323,637 people. District A is 6,205 people above this number. That's what the plus means. District B has 8,506 people above this number. District C, almost the same, 8,640 people above this number. District D is 36,000 people short of this number. District E, again, 30,000 people short of this number. District F, almost 42,000 people above this number. And District G, almost right at this number, within 1,000 people of this number. And so that's why we redistrict, because it's not, it, it doesn't follow the one man, one vote concept to have District D, one person, excuse me, uh, one person, one vote, concept to have District D, 36,000 people shy of the ideal number, and District F, 41,000 above the ideal number. That's a 71,000 person spread. That's way too much. Thank you, Dave. And in, can you speak to, you can't based on where potential growth is, correct? Correct. You, you cannot. Currently. Even though we know what areas of town are growing. Right. You cannot do that. But what, you, you did raise one other thing, Chris, and that is, um, I can assure you that when anything is brought in front of the commissioners, they will see and the public will see um, the minority numbers here. Again, I, we, I just didn't, I didn't do that now because I really wanted this to be an opportunity to, for me to hear from you all. Th this, these are not finished products by any definition. Um, these are opportunities for me to kickstart a conversation by saying, here are some of the things that I'm thinking. Um, Yvette Williams, uh, and I'm not speaking in my capacity as chair of the Spring Valley Town Advisory Board. I'm speaking as a citizen, so I just want to say that. Um, and I also am the chair of the Clark County Black Caucus, and so I'm just kind of comparing because as uh, Chris G was just saying, um, the last time we went through this 10 years ago, there was a lot of community input, a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions. We even came with our own proposed plan. So um, I hope that we're gonna have that kind of engagement again because we are particularly concerned about communities of interest. Um, but I would like to speak as a resident of District F. And I'm speaking on behalf of the 1.1 million unincorporated residents that make up Clark County. We do not have the luxury of a city council or a municipality, so the only represent, representation we have is our county commissioner. And I'm very disturbed. You can see all the growth, growth in my district. I'm particularly concerned that you divvy up, that di Spring Valley is a township. We have over uh, 200, and 50,000 residents, and it continues to grow. And we do not want our township chopped up where our vote becomes diluted and is no longer important to our representatives. Currently, we have two commissioners. We don't want more than that. And so I just wanted to come and express that. Thank you. Does, can I just ask you a question? Does, does Spring Valley extend north of Desert Inn Road? Uh, yes. Yes. How far north? Sahara. To Sahara. Yeah, and then some parts, okay. you, you've got some of it in there. I mean, it kind of zigzags around. So right now, looking at the map the way you have it, Spring Valley only has 
continues to have in your proposed plan, uh, Commissioner Mike Naff. Commissioner Mike Naff and Commissioner Justin Jones. Right. And that we're fine with that. We understand we're a big township. Right. But we are growing. Yes. And we want to make sure that the uh, representative we have, the only local representative in local government representing our interests, actually has a, a stake in it. We want to know that those commissioners, those two, and not more than that, because then our vote becomes diluted and you then violate number five, respect for neighborhood boundaries. So thank you. I appreciate that, thank you. And I would tell you in your, uh, in your capacity as chair of the Black Caucus, I would love to receive any input from the Black Caucus on these maps as well. We, what we have tried to do and the reason you see District D growing all the way up to uh, Deer Springs is because that's the direction African-American migration has taken place, right? And so that's why I chose to push District D up when it needed to pick up people. And that's what we asked for 10 years ago. It went further east. We tried to go further north because we were going north and northwest. Well, I'm glad that we're thinking along the same terms for this time. Thank you. Thank you. Together township maps as an overlay, would, which would be a good idea to take a look at. Then you have more of an idea of where your communities of interest are potentially. Sure. That's easy to that, do. That would should be yeah. easy to do. Easy to do. And then if we do, yeah, and then the, any, and, the and the municipality boundary lines, so that sure. people see that D law before Commissioner McCurdy got there, it was always you know the majority. I think Lawrence had our first time around thirty-three thousand county members and the rest were all city of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so that's just the, the nature of the beast as far as municipal boundary lines, but it'd be helpful for people to see where North Las Vegas boundary lines and, and, and city of Las Vegas come into play. I would hope that the commissioners would have more meetings and that each of those meetings, we have the breakouts of representation for minorities. So we know which districts way one way or another. So visually, and then back to the young lady's question, there is supposed to be a virtual map that you can create your own. I know the city of Las Vegas, even even though I've got some concerns about some of what they're drawing, should have that put together already. There so we should have that for the county, I would think, just so people can submit. We had, what, 20 meetings last time, I think? I mean, 20 different maps last time. It was, there were just, people could submit. Mm -hmm. So that, that we actually had, so people have a better understanding of what's going, you don't get the criticism later going, oh, they gerrymandered that, or that, you know, I, they did that for so-and-so. Yeah. With no disrespect, even, we do know where the growth is, and even though you can't draw based on that, there's nothing wrong with moving towards that growth as well, so you, that's and another factor. Feel comfortable too, they have access so, to so again, since I did it last time, I can speak to last time, and, and I can tell you, that last time we had three town hall meetings. This is the first one we've had this year. Um, we also had an email address, redistricting at ClarkCountyNV.gov, in, in which I received uh, emails from people with suggestions or ideas about what these districts ought to look like, and we're doing that again this time. And I certainly encourage everyone to send me their ideas at redistricting at ClarkCountyNV.gov. Anybody else? Gentlemen, go ahead. You can give it to her first. Trying not to just favor one side of the aisle here. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Tiffany, and I'm a GIS data analyst um, by day, citizen by night. And I'm just curious as to know that I see you guys have a plus 10 or minus 10 variance is where the federal stands, whereas Nevada uh, aims for plus or minus 2% variance. What were some other factors that allows you to say that this is a good map or this is a bad map? I never said it was either good or bad. I simply said it was a starting point to kickstart a conversation with the public. Okay, what factor would you then say this is, I mean, good being a subjective word, I mean, right, but as far as measurably, what would make, you know, what factor says, okay, this is a 0.9 map versus a 0.75 map? So the factors, I guess, come back to the six rules, right? How closely does the map 
follow the six rules that we've laid out. And it certainly balances population within 2%, which is good, Correct. right? It creates a second majority Latino seat, which again, I think is good. It follows African-American migration north, so the African-American community can be heard as best as it can in this community, which I think is good. It tries to concentrate the Asian-American community in District F to the fullest extent possible, which again, I think is a good thing. So, so allow me to clarify, how do we quantify those things? Those things are easily quantified in terms of the percentage of the, of the electorate in each district. Right, so I can tell you, for example, that uh, District E, uh, in, the, in the current map, the map that exists today is about 45% Hispanic. In, in this map, it is over 50. Am I answering your question? Somewhat, yes. Okay, is there a part that I'm missing? I, I, I wanna answer it fully. Uh, just more visuals or more reports. I mean, I, I love maps, and so I, I can definitely see it, but being able to kind of see between even the growth and being able to factor in the difference of 10 years ago to today, being able to put that again on a scale of some type of factor for those qualities, because I, I believe that those qualities are, are a very good benchmark, but being able to quantify those so that we can comparatively see the improvement or the change over time is where I was kind of kind of um, going, coming from, but I can definitely uh, submit more. So I think you've actually, I think you've raised a really, really good point, and to the extent, and I'll answer it this way, by saying to the extent that we do uh, any other public hearings on this, and certainly the commission will have public hearings on this when it considers maps, I will make sure that there are, uh, that there is data reflecting the demographic makeup of each of the districts present. You made that suggestion, I hear you loud and clear, and I think it's an excellent one, and I thank you for it. Awesome, I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, I, fa I found the software. Um, if everyone goes to the Vote Nevada website, there is a redistricting software, there's training available. Um, Dr. Cosgrove could not be here tonight, but in what I've heard her talk about the last couple months, and her trainings on this software, you can go in and create a username password. You can pull up your own demographical map. Um, it'll tell you everything that you wanna know about that. You can also mark your maps for areas of interest, communities of interest, um, and you can save those maps and submit them. So um, because Dr. Crossgrove is not here tonight, that's where the public can find it. And then um, I know she would strongly encourage the county like she did the trustees um, to, uh, to get the public to do that on their own um, for those that are interested. Thank you, I really, really appreciate you saying that. I would love to get uh, submitted maps from the public and I know the commissioners would as well. Thank you. Sir. Hello, my name is Noe Orozco, the Census and Redistricting Coordinator with Silver State Voices. And actually, if I could, uh, I had a couple of questions, but if I could back it up in terms of the quantifiable stuff, uh, I think, and I don't wanna speak for you, but you could let me know if I'm on the right track in terms of being able to quantify how this is like a 0.9 or whatever that percentage is, would it be helpful to know that uh, with respect to the neighbor neighborhood boundaries saying, we spoke to this neighborhood and this neighborhood says, great. We spoke to this neighborhood and, and that way, that's another way that you are quantifying it uh, other than just saying you are, uh, it's, a contiguous district, it's a contiguous district, it's compact and it's equal. Uh, so that's just something, I don't know if that was near what, what you were saying, but in terms of what I would like to say, uh, and uh, the data right here, it is, it is showing where the districts need to grow and shrink. But I think uh, also things that we are missing is the fact that Nevada is now the third most diverse state in the country. And I'd be happy to describe how the Census Bureau defines that. But apart from that, with respects to the Asian uh, population in the state, uh, we are also ranked fourth in the country. When you take into account just the native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, we're still ranked fourth. And then whenever you combine them uh, accurately to make sure you're not overcounting it, we're still fourth. And in terms of the state, I mean, at, at the local and county level, there is no AAPI representation. And in terms of the old maps, I know right around Windmill, 
um, there's a community of interest right now there. Uh, this past weekend, we held a, uh, a, a meeting to speak with community leaders. We drew a map on District R. It's a free website. You don't even need to create an account. You can just go to district, the letter R, dot org, and you can just start developing your own community, and then also you can describe it. You can also put important places, and in doing so, we realized that uh, right now, a and F are actually being divide, dividing a uh, community. And if we were to be looking at the original map that has been referred to right now, that district boundary is still dividing that community. So you know, we would be happy to, have, to continue having the conversation. Uh, the other uh, community that I feel is in terms of the indigenous population in the state, it grew by 89%. But here in Clark County, the indigenous population grew by over 113%. And the original map that we're looking at, C and D, it's dividing the Las Vegas Indian colony. If we were to be looking again at the original map that everyone is referencing, that, that uh, reservation is still being split up. And in terms of having meetings uh, with the, uh, the, on, tribe, on, on the reservations or with tribal communities, I don't know if there has been any of that, but uh, you, you know, I, I, we would be happy to have that conversation. And then the last thing that I would like to say is, uh, in terms of the black uh, population in Clark County, it's about 15%. And uh, the black elected officials of Clark County re mirror that representation. And in terms of creating uh, two majority minority districts that favor the Latinx community, uh, that, that's great. But at the same time, I am a little cautious to see, like, is it at that point going to pit one community versus another community? If, if so. You've given us a lot to unpack. Let me try as best I can. Uh, first, this carve out right here, this little blue carve out, it is designed exactly to do what you said, which is keep the Indian reservation together, as opposed to using the interstate as a dividing line. If I, I can't find any more people around here in District C that are being divided from the Native American community that, that's on both sides of this interstate. If you think I'm missing some people, I, I, I certainly welcome any suggestions you have as to where those people are. I, I can tell you that every conversation that I've ever had with any of the members of the Clark County Commission uh, with regard to Native Americans, they want to expand Native American participation. And, and that's the purpose for breaking the, uh, breaking the 95 as a, as a district line right there. So again, if I'm missing people, please tell me. With regard to um, the African American community, I don't know how I can get a more a, a district that has a higher percentage of African Americans than, than, than what we've drawn here in District D. And, and, and I'm loath to do anything that would dilute African American representation in Clark County. If, again, if, if you or anyone, the Black Caucus, if anyone has ideas of how we can expand further African American um, involvement and make District D a larger African-American presence, I think that's great. Um, I welcome that conversation too. And finally, if there is, if you have a map, if you have ideas to maximize Asian and Pacific Islander representation, I welcome seeing that. Um, that's something that that I would be very interested in. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, describing uh, at least the, the second map. And in terms of the, the maps, I know now that we have that um, website where we would be able to share that uh, with uh, the county and we will be doing that. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure, sure. There's very little difference between map one and map two, they're just really two different versions of uh, uh, maps that I've been working on. The, the biggest difference between map one and map two is, is that in uh, map two, I, I've, 
I've really kept Charleston as, as more of a line between C and F in map one. You can see District F goes all the way up to the Summerlin Parkway over here. That's really the biggest difference. Also, in, uh, in, in this map, um, District C swings down uh, just east of Chinatown. Can you get one? I mean, on something, whatever you do your next public meeting, so people understand. This is my rep. Right, they have to load the data. They have to live in the district. No. Oh, they have to live in the district. They have to live in the district. Yeah, they're still in the district. Just want to make sure no one's gotten. Yeah, I know what you're saying. They draw. No, I can, I can assure you that no one has been drawn out of their district. <laughs> yes. They didn't hire me to draw them out. <laughs> Yes, sir. One question I forgot to ask. In terms of these proposed maps that we have here, is it possible to get them in a GeoJSON file or a shape file so that we can also uh, see uh, the, uh, basically be able to p b get the, the maps and be able to create our own version that we feel is more reflective? So GeoJSON or shape files? I can only tell you I will look into that. That's your... You're, you're, you're asking a question that uh, I have to have other people answer. First, first of all, thank you for letting me get a second round of questions. I learned that from the legislature, you guys. <laughs> Another bite at the apple. Um, I, I know I asked a question. I, I know I didn't get a clear answer because I asked four questions last time. Um, my concern about E, and this is just a comment, when you talk about being a majority uh, Latino community, is that when you get down back into Henderson, to me, I start looking at voting power. Over when you get into Wagon Wheel, when you get into that area, there's gonna be a large amount of growth. I know you can't consider that when you're drawing the map, but my fear is that because that voting block there might prevent the community if it's gonna be a Hispanic seat from voting that. So that's just a comment. The second question I have is, we talk about the Asian community in F. You mentioned the difference in maps onto there. Can you give us an idea of what that percentage is in map one and two on the Asian community in F? I, I can. Um, in, uh, in this map, in map number two, I believe the Asian percentage is somewhere, uh, and, and please pardon me, I'm doing this by memory, I think it's somewhere around 25, 26%. Um, I, I don't think the, the Asian number is significantly different in between the two maps. Um, I, I've, I've, tried really, really hard to get it up to 30, and no matter how I drew it, I'm just not able to get the Asian, it, it, they're, just, they're just too spread out. I, I just couldn't get it up to 30. To do all the things that when, that when you see them, you come in and you say, why do you have this finger here? Why do you have this cherry stem there? So, it's all balancing you know, priorities. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi. Oh, good evening. Thank you, Dave. Uh, my name is Jeff Wald. I'm just, just interested, uh, you know, citizen here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I live in uh, Commission District uh, G in the city of Henderson. And at least from looking at these maps, it doesn't look like things are going to change much to, uh, for me. But I, I do uh, agree with some of the uh, concerns that people have. Uh, prior to coming to the, uh, the meeting, I was trying to find some more information, maps and other uh, uh, demographic information. So uh, I would hope that you uh, would be able to provide that. And I would sincerely hope that uh, we have additional meetings, you know, with more people uh, in attendance, because I think it is important that uh, people, you know, express their, uh, their concerns. I realize that not everyone can be here, but, you know, we need, we need to have, you know, greater citizen input, because you have to remember, you know, the folks that sit up in the front of the room represent us, and they need to listen to our uh, concerns, and quite often that does not happen. I appreciate that. I, I can tell you with regard to this process, which is the only thing that I'm involved in with regard to Clark County, they listen very, very closely. 
And the more public input that we get, the more input that is sent to redistricting at ClarkCountyNV.gov, um, the more they, the more that I can share with them. But they are very interested in hearing your opinions. That that we haven't posted anything yet because this was designed to be the kickoff of that process. I, again, I, I I wanted to use this session as a way to hear from the public. What do you guys think? What do you want to see in the districts? How do you think I'm doing so far? How can you help me give a better product to the commissioners? Right? I'm here, really, Jeff, I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for the help of everyone in this room to make me better at this, right? So that I can get, um, I can give maps to the commissioners that better reflect what their constituents want. With regard to your first comment, though, you said you live in District G, you haven't seen a whole lot of change in District G. I guess I would come back to this and say, District G is only 976 people off of what a perfect district ought to be in terms of population. I don't know that there's a whole need for a lot of change in District G. And, and, and I haven't heard anybody else express a desire for a lot of change in, in the composition of District G. Anyone else? Yeah. Hi, my name is Tammy Tiger. I'm a Choctaw and Muscogee. I'm an urban native. So I'm here to help with some of the indigenous Great. community questions that you have. And, and thank you for considering the um, Las Vegas Paiute tribe who live off of the Snow Mountain area because that had been missed before. Um, so the tribal population is very small here in Clark County. The majority of our uh, population are the American Indian and in combination. So I just wanted to see if you're going to include with our data, as far as our urban population numbers, um, the redistricting counts came in around 63,000 here in Clark County. Mm -hmm. And will you be, make, be sure to include the American Indian alone and the American Indian in combination fields for our I, people? I, I would ask you in particular, um, help me make sure that we maximize the, the Native American population's impact in, these pro, in this process, right? Look at. Tell me where they are and, and, and how to keep them together. I, I've tried to do that, as I said, up here with, with this cut. You can show me other places where they are. And if there are places where they have been divided in the past, I will do my very level best to make sure that we don't divide them. So, like I said, we're urban natives, so we live all over the county. Right. Um, a lot of us receive health care services from um, the Paiute Clinic or the Moapa Clinic, so some people choose to live closer to North Las Vegas area or more central. Um, however, we have collected almost 100 community of interest maps from our indigenous population with those um, comments that we'd be happy to provide I you. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. During Thanks no for way, being here. Service. appreciate that very, very much. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Megan Barth, and I'm, I was a little late, but I heard a comment that you made driving in here as I was watching on Twitter. But the first question I have was um, the six rules for Clark County redistricting. If you could explain one of them. Sure. Um, under four, it says racial balance and minority opportunity, neither packing nor cracking of districts. Can you explain that packing and cracking and what that means? Of course, I'd be happy to. Thanks. Um, packing is trying to shove as many minority persons into one district as possible, and in essence, bleaching all the other districts. Cracking is taking a core of minority, a core minority community, and cutting it up like a pizza, right? So that the minority community is divided into different slices so that the minority community's impact is diluted significantly. And what uh, Clark County commissioners in general, and Mr. Sigerbloom in particular, he's been very outspoken about this as he wants to make sure, and all the commissioners do, want to make sure that we neither try to pack minorities into one district as much as possible, nor do we want to divide them into seven districts so that their opportunities to have influence in an election is diluted. 
Okay, and so the, I guess the follow-up, and, and if, maybe I heard you wrong, but I was driving in and trying to navigate at the same time and listen to the Twitter <laughs> or, feed. Or maybe I just misspoke. <laughs> that's, that's also a very real possibility. You had said that it was important for the, the commissioners to have two majority Hispanic uh, districts, I believe. I did say that, yes. And would that be reflective of packing, or is that something different? I think that is something different. So I, I don't think we're packing all of the minorities into District D and District E, especially with regard to the Latino community. For example, District B has a Latino population of about 31%. So I, I, I don't think we're doing that at all. Conversely, the, the, minor, the Latino population of districts G, A, F, and C is significantly lower, right? I have not in any way tried to distribute the minority population, the Latino community. I have not tried to cut them up and distribute them among all of the different districts. We, what we've tried to do is what we reasonably can do, which is I, I don't think it's possible to create three, minor, three Latino majority seats in Clark County. Um, I do believe it's possible to do two. So how can we do two in a way that gives Latinos an opportunity, gives the Latinx community an opportunity to elect someone of their choosing and at the same time doesn't dilute their representation, gives them an opportunity to have influence, significant influence in District B as well. Yes, Chris. Is it 10% is the variance that's a permitted either way? 10% is the, is the legally permissible amount of variance. The commissioners have asked, yes, either way. The commissioners have asked that uh, we keep the, the variance down to 2%. So if I look at the map, though, you have one at 11, one at 12, either way. So the that's that's the current. That's not this map. That's the current. That's the current map. These numbers. So there's no confusion. These numbers reflect this map. Right. These numbers are the reason we're going through the redistricting process. So what, is, what, are, what, is, what are these two maps showing? Those two maps are showing every single district is within two percent of that three hundred twenty-three thousand six hundred thirty-seven number. Yes, as I said, I'm going to provide all of that data. I promise you I will. So, to, be, to be more precise, 2% um, of 323,000 would be about 6,500 people. There is no district in any of these uh, maps that have a population of more than 6,500 above 323 none less. So remind me, so those yes. numbers there reflect the current, but that was what grew? That's currently what it is? Or that's yes, what it is? so in other words, Chris, <laughs> 10 years ago, when you and I did this together, right, and we did this map, sure. yeah. yes, <laughs> sort of. It was it, it was past seven nothing. You did vote for it. If if yeah. ten years ago, right. District D had roughly the same population as District F. Today, That's what it is. right? This is the difference. Today, District D is thirty six thousand below the, the ideal number, District F, 42,000 above the ideal number. So they are 73, pardon me, 78,000 people apart, right? That's just ridiculous. That's just too much. Well, that's what's grown. That's what's grown, right. That's, and that's why we're doing this. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We, we need to give District D more people. We need to take some people away from District F. Right? And, 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 
And, and, and what's made this really a challenge, what's made this really a challenge is as we've tried to grow District D and create two new Latino majority districts, District D has given some Latino representation, again, what the uh, gentleman earlier called the finger right here, uh, has moved into District E to make sure that we got above that 50% number. What are the different challenges from 10 years ago to today? Correct. As a practitioner, what were some challenges that you had then, and how do those challenges differ now? Did we conquer the challenges then, and then what presents as new challenges now? I mean, aside from the six rules and, and some of the mandates or some of the requests, you know, what have been some challenges in this process thus far? You know, 10 years ago, it's, it's, it's unfortunately, it's the same story, right? Which is, 10 years ago, District D was significantly underpopulated. And we ended up taking District D all the way up to Craig. And there were people then who were saying, why is that going all the way up here? And we had a commissioner named Tom Collins who represented District B at the time, who said, I don't want District D coming all the way up here. So to answer your question, it's a lot of the same because that's how our society has grown, right? We, we, have, we, we have an underpopulated District D again. We have an underpopulated District E again. We have an overpopulated area around here again. And we're going to fix them again. I, I hope I've answered your question. Yeah. Anybody else? If, if anybody wants to talk to me privately after this meeting, I welcome that. I'll hang out. I won't leave until the last person's left. I really do want to hear from you. I'm really looking for your feedback. I really want your suggestions. I am counting on you all to make me better. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. He's going to hand you a microphone. <laughs> Awesome, thank you so much. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Maria. I'm with Mi Familia Vota. For those that know, don't know, Mi Familia Vota is a um, nonprofit organization specifically focused on helping Latino and immigrant communities and their allies. So as anticipated, this data was revealed about how the growth of La the Latinx community has been integral um, to the increase of the nation's uh, population. Here in Nevada, we make 890,257 um, of more than the 3.1 million residents, in fact, at 28% of the state's population. Nevada ranks fifth with respect to the share of the Latinx population. So taking a closer look to Clark County, the percentage is even higher than in the state. Um, out of Clark County's 2.2 million residents, nearly one third, one in three are Latinx. Unfortunately, as I look at this body, I like, don't see any Latinx commissioner. As mentioned, uh, Nevada does rank five now, but 10 years ago, we ranked 42. Our community has grown so much over the past decade and in Clark County, the Latinx community embodies the definition of a community in, of interest. We share bilingual and bicultural characteristics. Our children attend the same schools. Uh, most are employed in the same work sectors and the community even has cultural and linguistically appropriate nonprofit organizations such as Mi Familia Vota. The Latinx, the Latinx community and Mi Familia Vota please urge the commissioner to stay active in trying to engage our community by holding hearings in the community to learn more about our unique priorities and needs and also hold those same town, uh, town halls in Spanish and English, please. Thank you so much. You. Again, I would, I would just reiterate the commissioners have been unanimous in saying they would like to see a second Latino majority district, and I don't believe it's possible to draw a third. So I, I think they are all, I think I, could, I can speak comfortably and say they are all desirous of making sure there's maximum opportunities for 
Latinx representation on the Clark County Commission. Anyone else? Really, three times? No, just can you <laughs> can you give us timelines what you're looking? At? I know you mentioned that previously, like you know when the map, when you think public input will close, when the map, when the county commission will sit there and do it. Um, those are those are questions that are way above my pay grade. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Teller. Um, I just want to say that um, when these meetings were announced, the uh, email address of where we should send questions was put in there. I sent an email saying, um, before we come to the meeting, so that I can ask intelligent questions, uh, may I see the maps? Is there some way to look at the maps? I received no response to that. We don't have the information that you have as you're, as, you're, as you're creating these things, and therefore our input can't be of value to you unless we know more stuff. So please try to share that information in advance of future meetings. Uh, I learned a tremendous amount today because, and I see the complexity of the process that you're in and how hard you're working at it, but if you want actual input from us, give us more information, please. That's, that's a fair point. I appreciate you saying that. Like I said, I promise you, there will never be another one of these where, where there's not data that accompanies the, the pictures, right? That's, that's my fault, that's, that's on me, and I'm sorry. So, so as you're evaluating the number of people who showed up tonight, please reckon that in with the, the amount of information that you gave people to begin with. Because people can't show up and say, I'm gonna have comments if they don't know what's going on other than the, the vaguest possible announcement and no response if you send in an email question. Thank you. Um, so uh, it was also a little overshadowing that we were getting um, social media updates for all the nights out this week that really overshadowed this meeting on social media all weekend. Um, and today. So um, what I heard loud and clear, and I do know of our community, we have some amazing community organizations that are more than interested in this. And I am sure that you will be getting a plate full of maps back. Great, I look forward to it, I love it. I do, I enjoy getting them, I enjoy looking at them, and, and they have real impact. Don't, please don't believe otherwise, they do. Thank you so much and thank you for the hard work. Uh, my name is Eric Jang here for the Asian Community Development Council. Thank you for acknowledging that. So Clark County right now, I think the rough count from census is what 15%. A lot of time the numbers used is just Asian alone and Pacific Islanders alone. But when you actually count, we are, we have, we are the second top uh, with the most uh, interracial households. So when we do Asian alone in combination, plus a Pacific Islander alone and combination. We draw uh, Venn diagrams. So we believe there's about 330,000 Asian and Pacific Islanders here in Clark County. That's 15% of the county. So really appreciate all the effort put in as communities of interest, 46% growth since uh, 2010 to 2020. So for us, just making sure that the community's uh, voices are reflected, we're very fortunate to partner with our partner, Silver State Voices, the National API Vote, who's happened to be in town for uh, the National Immigrant Conference to be able to hold a community leader training with uh, East Asian, South Asian, Pacific Islander uh, community leaders all got together this past Saturday to talk about MAP and we drew a map together. And that was our first meeting and we invited uh, Commissioner Jones to come and give a really quick Q&A. But then we are, I think we're reaching out to all commissioners and really want to urge uh, all the commissioners to have some sort of town hall and Q&A and being able to, now that we kind of see the maps and now that we're drawing our own maps through you know, some of the community, uh, some of the softwares that we have access to, really want to make sure that the community's voices are included. So very exciting, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Let, let me just add to your point, um, I will tell you in every single conversation I've had with Commissioner Jones in particular, he has been uh, quite animated about making sure that we keep the Asian American community together 
as much as possible. He has clearly heard your voice. Again, Yvette Williams, speaking on behalf of the Clark County Black Caucus, uh, just going to the point just made by my colleague, we also have another uh, subgroup called Mixed Race that often do not identify or check the box as African American. They elect to be uh, identified as mixed race. So if we add that in, our number then jumps quite up to probably over 20%. So I just thought I'd make a note of that too since we're all grabbing for numbers. You're, you're, you're right, and when we, when we, I do look at, there is a census category called any part black, and I do look at that and took that very much into account in drawing District D. And again, I, I say to you, if, if you can do better in terms of maximizing African American representation, I'd love to see that effort. Right, it's, it, it has been a priority of mine to, to do that. It's because it's a priority of the commissioners. And I remember working with you 10 years ago. The black community has integrated very well. Yes. I mean, I've seen it in, in Spring Valley. So we're, we're spread out. We're not all in one little group, but we try to do the best we can to make sure we do African American reflected and represented on the As in every, every branch of our Understood and agree with every syllable you just said. Anyone else? Jeff again? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I'd like to know uh, what is the deadline for producing a final map and when could we expect uh, a vote? Basically, I just want to get an idea of how long of a process we have. I, I believe the deadline is the end of the year. And I believe the commissioners would like to have this process wrapped up uh, by the end of November. So that's why we're trying to move as expeditiously as we can toward that at the same time, making sure there's enough time for public input and public suggestions. Anyone else? Again, I'll stay here and I'll, ta I'll talk to every last person privately. I won't leave until the last person has left. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and ideas. Again, my name is Dave Heller. The email is redistricting at clarkcountynv.gov. Please do not hesitate to email me with any suggestions, ideas, maps, uh, or, or drawings that you have. I welcome your involvement, your participation, as do the commissioners. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Have a good night.